number of facets to this. I mean, from, from an economic point of view, I mean, it's clear that if somebody wants to, as we move towards a digital economy, if somebody wants to set their business up online, clearly you've got to have a, a, a decent standard of broadband to be able to, to do it, particularly from, from an upload point of view. So I think when you look at that, if you want to do, you know, run, run sites from home and that, that it, it's essential for that. More and more what we see is people also want to work from home. So the idea of being able to log in in the morning, have access to your data center, all the full-blown kind of, let's say, the protections that you get as being part of a, of a data a walled data environment, you can have at home with with uh, with uh, NGA broadband. So that that will be the kind of key economic benefits, I think. When you look at the social aspects, I was thinking about this, and and I was talking to a friend of mine who's a professor in UCD, and he, he was saying that um, uh, a lot of kids, you know, I was talking about, you know, how would I manage my young fella and try and avoid him emigrating or going overseas, and he said, well, he says, in one sense, he says you could, you know, you could probably organise a job from ho uh, here here yourself, but he says the real issue is, he says he'll go overseas because his mates have to go overseas, so even if you can sort him out, he'll have to stay here. So I got to thinking, well. Like a key enabler of people being able to stay here is kind of fundamentally the, the jobs market and the digital market that broadband enables. So I mean, one of the, the reasons that, that kind of I like being involved in, in, in uh, NGA rollout is that I'm kind of minimising the, the, the probability or, or trying to take a couple of percentage points off the probability that my young fella is going to go off, uh, offshore because his mates had to. So I'd like him to, if he wants to go work overseas, I'd like him to do it because he has to, not because, or because he wants to, not because he has to. And I think that's one of the key, the key social pieces that allows people work, not just in their own country, but in their own community. And I think that's really powerful. There was a recent study that showed we were seventh in the world when it comes to, to kind of quality of, of internet and fourth in Europe. And I think that, you know, that's really good from, from when you look at the, the footprint where, where it is. I mean, I think as we look at, at extending that footprint and specifically that 25 meg definition, I think it's important that we, we look at it as a usable 25 meg. So I think it's really, it, it really is becoming table stakes, but I think it's got to be a usable 25 megs. It can't be a kind of a, a peak 25 megs in the middle of the night. It's got to be something that will sustain multiple Netflix streams you know, uh, or multiple YouTube streams uh, and still let you ha have, have uh, internet capability. So it's really, from my perspective, I think it's about you know, 25 down. I think they talked about 25 down, three up. You know, probably the government aren't far away from it with, with their kind of uh, insistence on, a, on a 30 down, 10 up. Um, uh, so from that perspective, I think, uh, but, but also it's got to be a usable 30 meg. It's got to be, you know, uh, everybody using it at the same time uh, rather than a kind of, kind of congested availability of 30 meg. What we're seeing is, is, is effectively a data explosion. I guess, you know, on the mobile side, pe people talk about a data explosion, but what we're really seeing is also on, on the fixed side where <coughs> the, really the transition from, from, from basic email and internet access towards media consumption and media stream consumption is just expanding you know, uh, beyond, uh, beyond all, all recognition relative to where it was. So I mean, what we've kind of done is like the, the big drivers of value on our sites are now things like YouTube, Netflix, um, people uploading videos to Facebook, people streaming videos off Facebook. You can see all of these, these social media sites basically turning into, into uh, media stream generators from our point, point of view and, and upload generators. So what we see, what, um, what, we, what we're trying to do is try to try and you know, minimise the amount of, of distance that that, that, that that traffic has to travel. So we're actually, you know, before even before Netflix started, we had a, a Netflix cache embedded on our network. That means that the Netflix, the most commonly viewed Netflix stuff, is actually served from Ireland, not from, from, from their, their head end anywhere else. We also peer with, uh, with Google, so a lot of the YouTube traffic goes straight Straight down a, a pipe to, to YouTube. We're also, you know, we have a couple of RTE caches on our network, so RTE player and that. So that's where we're really seeing the big drivers of, uh, of data. When we built the original NGA, what we're doing, the, the cabinet based stuff, we actually we, we dropped uh, 24 fibers at every cabinet, even though we only needed four. Um, and when, the reason we did that was so that we could. Uh, when the time was right, we could pick those fibers up and bring them out in a, in a gigabit pond configuration. 
And the gigabit pan configuration basically lets us take one fiber strand and split it into 32 and bring it out to people's homes. <clears throat> so effectively, those 20 spare fibers in a cabinet, you know, uh, let us connect a couple of hundred more, uh, a couple of hundred more homes with with uh, with uh, GPON. So what, what we're looking at doing is we'll use a technology called 10 gig GPON, which means that those 32 uh, uh, fibers will be able to share dynamically 10 gig of capacity, which, which moves things on, on dramatically. Um, when we look at G.Fast, we've actually done a pilot on, on G.Fast, um, and effectively what we can see is that over a copper drop of between you know, 30 and 100 meters, we see about a gig of capacity. Uh, on a person's line, roughly speaking, the way we had the tri trial set up, 750 down, 250 up. And, and, you know, and, and where we'd like to go with G.Fast is that it would be reverse powered from the customer's CP, so we don't actually have the expense of, of, of trenching in ESB power. And um, so uh, effectively what we'll do is we'll take one of those strands of fibers, and if, we're not running, if it's an area where we're not running GPON in there, we'll take that strand and run that strand into the, the, uh, the, the, the G.Fast modem and serve uh, eight to 12 houses off of that, that G.Fast uh, modem, bringing those kind of speeds without having to interfere with the ingress point into the house. Because one of the, the issues when you run a fiber network is if you've got to get into somebody's house and di drill a brand new hole or dig a trench in the garden, which in urban areas tends to be a, a bigger issue than in, in, in rural areas, then you, you, you're looking for a clever way of getting that bandwidth in and taking the fiber to within 30 or 40 meters of, the, of, the, home, of the, the, the home, putting the electronics there at the top of a pole and then driving that bandwidth into the home, that's a, that's a clever way of doing it. So that's the kind of way we see ourselves using G.Fast. It's very promising technology. When you look at it, really, the, with the distances involved, the idea of, I mean, effectively copper-based um, uh, broadband technologies require the electronics to be closer to the home. So as I kind of described, you know, we put it out to the cabinet within a kilometre of the home and we can serve the 200 customers connected to that cabinet. We put it to a pole within 30 metres of a home, we can send, serve eight customers off, that, off that, that pole. But when you're in rural areas, you're not going to get those those aggregations of people easily. So really when you look at it from a technology point of view, fibre is the solution to put it out there. And uh, so what we're looking at is, is a, a gigabit pond, a G pond, and we're being quite creative. Ireland is, is a reasonably unique um, uh, location for how, how our build practices have been and we tend to do an awful lot of what we call ribbon and rural. So in other words, you have a crossroads with a pub and a church and a shop and then there's houses gone out the, you know, north, south, east and west and it's a difficult environment to serve. So you have to be quite creative and it's, it's, it's reasonably unique uh, certainly in Europe as we look at the techniques. So we're, we're spending a lot of time and money trying to understand what those build techniques would look like. We're building a pilot up in, in uh, Balcarra, up in, in County Mayo, where we're testing a lot of these configurations out. And that's all with a view to, to putting our best foot forward when the National Broadband Plan uh, does come out.